Hey y'all. So I'm going to go over the questions that you have for your oral proficiency interview or your OPI for your semester exam next week. And first let me show you a couple different ways in which you can access this document. First, if you'll notice here on the screen that I'm on Echo and I'm going to click on the course um, for Spanish 1, 8th period. And the first thing you'll no notice is that if you go into the agenda, I've embedded the document as a PDF into your agenda. Excuse me. Next. Um, inside this agenda, you'll see this is actually, if you look at, this has today's agenda, but I also put it in yesterday's agenda, and I have it in Friday's agenda. Okay, so it's embedded in all three of those agendas. If that doesn't work for you, then you could also um, come down underneath the agendas and go to where it says um, activities without a project. Okay, and it just says activity that is right here in blue. So if we click on that and then go to second nine weeks, and you will notice that it's a Spanish 1 OPI fall semester. And so that's where you will come across this. And you have the option, one of the best things to do would actually be probably to um, go over here and download this document and save it um, to your computer. Now, I've already saved it to my computer, so I'm going to minimize this, and I actually have it open in Adobe. And um, I wanted to have a bigger screen so I can go over these questions. If you notice on this PDF, actually here to the right of each question, I have um, typed in red and italicized what that question actually means in English, just to kind of assist you. And then underneath each question, I have... Um, your guided response to each question. Okay, so um, just we're going to do this as a simulated interview. And the first thing that you'll do when you come in and you'll sit down, and then I'm going to ask you some of these questions. And it may not be like question, answer, question, answer. It may fall more of a conversation, and that's actually how I prefer for the flow of the conversation to take place. But um, Let's just go ahead and we'll start with the first one. Okay. Como te llamas? Now, when I ask you, como te llamas, your response um, to what is your name should be me llamo and then whatever your name is. Okay. So if I say, como te llamas? Then you would respond, me llamo and then your name. All right. The second question. It's asking, how do you spell your name? So I'm actually wanting you to use the alphabet. We learned that earlier in the semester. And use those letters as a way to spell your name. And make sure that you get the pronunciation down. Okay, so if I said, you come in and I say, ¿Cómo te llamas? And um, you tell me your name. Then, ¿Cómo se escribe tu nombre? How do you spell your name? Your response would be, Se escribe. And then you proceed to spell your name. So for my name, if someone says, ¿Cómo se escribe tu nombre? Se escribe C-A-R-O-L-I-N-E. ¿Cuántos años tienes? How old are you? ¿Cuántos años tienes? So then your response is going to be, I've asked you, how old are you? Your response is, Tengo, then the number, años. ¿Cuántos años tienes? All right, so we're going to go on to number four. When is your birthday? Now, when I ask you when is your birthday, and you're telling me when your birthday is, you start out with um, the number, the day. So you're going to say it as a number, whatever day of the month it is. Mine is the 3rd of October. Okay, and so if I ask you when your birthday is, you would respond, Mi cumpleaños es el, then give me the number, de, and then the name of the month. So the question for that one is, ¿Cuándo es tu cumpleaños? All right, number five. 
Now this one asks, it, it's got a, an option here, okay? Are you funny or serious? Eres comico o serio? And you would say either soy or yo soy, and then you need to choose. Now, obviously, if you're a girl, I'm not going to ask you, eres comico o serio? I would ask you, eres comica o seria? All right, number six, are you hardworking or are you lazy? ¿Eres trabajador o perezoso? ¿Eres trabajador o perezoso? And your response is going to be, yo soy, or just soy, and whichever response is the more appropriate answer. Now, girls, this one's a little different because I'm not going to say trabajador. Yours is going to be, ¿Eres trabajadora o perezosa? ¿Eres trabajadora o perezosa? All right, so number seven, we'll go on to that one. It's asking, what day is today? And what day is tomorrow? I'm not asking what the date is. I'm asking for the day of the week. This is also something that we studied earlier in the year. So when I ask you, ¿Qué día es hoy? You're going to respond, hoy es, and then you give me the day of the week. And after you've said that, I'll say, pues, ¿Qué día es mañana? ¿Qué día es mañana? What day is tomorrow? Notice that I said pues, but that's not on the question here. So pues just means well. So when I ask you what day is today and you said hoy es jueves, pues que día es mañana? What day is tomorrow? Mañana es viernes or whatever day it is. And I would look to study what day you're taking the test. Um, so remember odd number classes take the test on Monday and then even number classes take the test on Tuesday. So if you're taking the test on Tuesday and I ask, ¿Qué día es hoy? Hoy es martes. ¿Y qué día es mañana? Mañana es miércoles. Okay. Now the next question. Uh, number eight. ¿Tienes mascotas? Do you have pets? And that question is simply a yes or no, okay? Um, if you have pets, then you would say C. Si. Now, if you do have pets and I say, and you said C, si, then I'm going to ask you, ¿Cuántas? Or I may say, ¿Cuántas mascotas tienes? How many pets do you have? And you would say, tengo, then give me the number, and mascotas. However, if you only have one pet, tengo una mascota. And then once you've told me how many pets you have, then I'm going to ask you, ¿Cómo se llama? O, ¿Cómo se llama tu mascota? What is your pet's name? Now, if it's just one pet, you would say, se llama Izzy. But if it's two pets, se llaman and then you would get both names. So if you ask me, ¿Tienes mascotas? Sí, tengo mascotas. ¿Cuántos? ¿Cuántas mascotas tienen? Pues yo tengo dos mascotas. Okay. ¿Cómo se llaman tus mascotas? Se llaman Izzy y Remy. Okay, and so you would just give both names. Now, moving on to number nine. ¿Tienes una familia grande o pequeña? Do you have a large or small family? Now, this question is relative because what's a large family to some people may not be a large family to others. And what's a small family to some people may not be a small family to others. So this is really up to you. I'm not going to know any different, okay? You just need to be able to describe, is your family large or small, okay? So when I ask you, ¿Tienes una familia grande o pequeña? 
tengo una familia, and then you need to choose an adjective to describe your family. Moving on to number 10 on the next page. ¿Cuántos hermanos tienes? How many siblings do you have? Now, if you have at least one sibling, then look at A. Tengo, then you give me the number, hermanos. If you only have one sibling and it's a brother, you would say, tengo un hermano. If you only have one sibling and it's a girl, you would say, tengo una hermana. Okay, and if you have more than one and it's a mixture, um, you would give me the number, tengo, then the number, hermanos. But if you only have sisters, tengo, then the number, hermanas. Remember that we want our nouns and adjectives, everything to be in agreement, okay? And if the noun for um, siblings or if all you have are sisters is feminine, then your adjectives also need to be feminine, okay? Um, now, if you don't have any siblings, then you would say, no tengo hermanos, soy hijo único. Or if you're an only child that's a girl, you would say, no tengo hermanos, soy hija única. And so that, again, that goes with the question, ¿cuántos hermanos tienes? Number 11. ¿Cómo se llaman tus padres? ¿Cómo se llaman tus padres? What are your parents' names? And remember, we talked about this. If you only have one parent or you don't want to share both names, that's totally up to you. It's a little different when we're talking about families because everyone's family is different, okay? If you want to list people that you feel like are your parents, but maybe legally or um, by blood, they're not actually your parents, but they take care of you as though they're your parents, by all means, you can list them, okay? So, if you ask me, ¿Cómo se llaman tus padres? I would answer, Mis padres se llaman Harlan y Gloria. Now, number 12. How old are your parents? ¿Cuántos años tienen sus padres? Or tus padres, either or. So, then you're going to tell me how old your parents are. If they're the same age, Mis padres tienen... And then the number, and you'll need to research that, go back and review those numbers, años. So, if my parents are both 59, mis padres tienen 59 años. Or, what's actually the case is, B, mi madre tiene 59 años y mi padre tiene 60 años. Meaning my mom is 59 and my dad is 60. All right, number 13. Do you have many cousins? ¿Tienes muchos primos? Either you do or you don't, okay? Again, I don't know the answer to that question. That's why I'm asking. You've got to tell me, okay? So, one more time. ¿Tienes muchos primos? Sí, tengo muchos primos. O, no, no tengo muchos primos. Either I have a lot of cousins or no, I don't have very many cousins. Okay? Number 14. ¿Eres alto o bajo? Are you tall or short? Or if you're a girl, ¿eres alta o baja? And then you will say, soy, and then the adjective to describe whether you are tall or short. Number 15, do you have many friends? ¿Tienes muchos amigos? If you have a lot of friends, then, sí, tengo muchos amigos. But if you don't have a lot of friends, no, no tengo muchos amigos. Number 16, who is your best friend? ¿Quién es tu mejor amigo? Now, you may have a best friend that's a girl. So remember to change that. And that's why I have the A in parentheses there for the answer. Mi mejor amigo es. 
and then you tell me their name. And then number 17, ¿Cómo es tu mejor amigo? What is your best friend like? Describe that person to me. So notice that I have three blanks on the answer here. I want you to come up with three good adjectives to describe your best friend. So, um, mi mejor amiga es bonita, inteligente, simpática, amable, generosa, y cómica. All of those adjectives could describe my best friend. And so you just need to have about three. You don't have to come up with more if you don't want to. I just wanted to kind of give you an idea of some adjectives that you could use to describe your best friend. Um, so I want you to go back over these questions um, and these answers. And if you need to replay this, by all means, you do that. And good luck.